Welcome to the first part of solving trig equations using substitution. Our focus on this lesson is to solve equations with half angle and multiple angles using substitution. So looking at our first example, we want to solve the given equation on the interval from 0 to 360 degrees. Notice how this interval includes 0 degrees and does not include 360 degrees. Notice how both our trig expressions are sine of x divided by 2. Let's perform a substitution for x divided by 2. Let's let u equal x divided by 2. Notice how if we solve this equation for x, we would multiply both sides by 2. So we would have x equals 2 times u. So now we'll perform a substitution for x divided by 2, solve the equation for u, and then use those solutions to determine the solution in terms of x. So performing substitution, we'd have sine of u equals square root 2 minus sine u. And now let's get these signs on the same side of the equation. So we'll add sine u to both sides, which will give us 2 sine u equals square root 2. And now we'll divide both sides by 2. So we have sine u equals square root 2 divided by 2. So our solutions in terms of u are going to be the angles that have a sine function value of square root 2 divided by 2. We should recognize this sine function value as one we can easily find on the unit circle or using reference triangles. Let's take a look at both. Let's first look at the unit circle. Remember on the unit circle, sine theta equals y. So we're looking for a y coordinate of square root 2 divided by 2, which must occur where y is positive which would be in the first and second quadrants. Notice how we have a y coordinate of square root 2 divided by 2 here at 45 degrees, as well as here at 135 degrees, which means sine 45 degrees equals square root 2 divided by 2, and so does sine 135 degrees. So these would be the two solutions in terms of u over the given interval which is not our solution because we need the solution in terms of x. But let's go ahead and write this down. We know that u equals 45 degrees and u also equals 135 degrees. Before we find x though, let's also find these two angles using reference triangles. Having a sine function value of square root 2 divided by 2 should remind us of a 45, 45, 90 reference triangle where we can label the two legs 1 and the hypotenuse square root 2. Notice how the sine of 45 degrees would be equal to the ratio of the opposite side of the hypotenuse, which would be 1 over square root 2, which if we rationalize, would be square root 2 divided by 2. So because we know sine is positive in the first and second quadrants, where y is positive, we'd sketch a 45 degree reference angle and reference triangle here in the first quadrant as well as in the second quadrant. Notice how for this reference triangle here, this leg would be negative 1, this would be positive 1, and this would be square root 2. Notice for both reference triangles, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is 1 divided by square root 2, which equals square root 2 divided by 2. So here's the 45 degree angle we found on the unit circle, and here's the angle of 135 degrees that we found on the unit circle. Again, our goal is to find x, not u. So if u equals 45 degrees, x would be equal to 2 times 45 degrees, which equals 90 degrees. And if u equals 135 degrees, so if we call this x sub 1, x sub 2 would be equal to 2 times 135 degrees, which equals 270 degrees. Now we could also check angles that are coterminal to these two. When we multiply by 2 to find x, they are going to be outside the given interval. To check our solutions graphically, what we can do is graph y equals sine of x divided by 2, the left side of the equation, and then graph y equals square root 2 minus sine of x divided by 2, which is the right side of the equation, and then verify the two functions would intersect at these two angles or these two x values. To save some time, I've already done this. Notice how the two functions do intersect at 90 degrees, as well as 270 degrees, verifying our two solutions are correct. Let's look at a second example. 
Here we have two times cosine three x minus square root three equals zero. We want to solve on the same interval. Let's let u equal three x here. So notice if u is equal to three x, to solve for x we would divide both sides by three, x equals u divided by three. So performing the substitution for three x, we can now write the equation as two cosine u minus square root three equals zero. Let's solve this for cosine u, so we'll add square root three to both sides and also divide by two. So we have cosine u equals positive square root three divided by two. So we'll first find our solutions in terms of u and then find these solutions in terms of x. Having a cosine function value of square root three divided by two should remind us of cosine function values on the unit circle as well as using reference triangles. And again, we'll look at both. Let's first look at the unit circle. Remember cosine theta is equal to x and x is positive in the first and fourth quadrants. So we're looking for an x coordinate of square root three divided by two in the first and fourth quadrants, which are here as well as here, which means cosine of 30 degrees is equal to square root three divided by two, and so is cosine 330 degrees. Of course, any angle that's coterminal to these two would also have the same cosine function value. So going back to our work, let's first write down that we know that u is equal to 30 degrees as well as u equals 330 degrees. Before we find our x values though, let's take a look at the reference triangle shown here. When we have a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle, we know we can label the short leg one, the hypotenuse two, the long leg square root three, and notice how the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to square root three divided by two, the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So we'd sketch a 30 degree reference angle and reference triangle in the first and fourth quadrants where we know cosine is positive. So we'd label all these short legs, well, one here and negative one here, the hypotenuse two, and the long leg in both triangles is square root three. So cosine 30 degrees and cosine 330 degrees both equal square root three divided by two. Now let's find our solutions in terms of x. So when u equals three degrees, x, or let's call it x sub one, is equal to 30 degrees divided by three, which equals 10 degrees. Now we need to be careful here. Remember, any angle that's coterminal to 30 degrees would also have a cosine function value of square root three divided by two. So we can find more solutions in terms of x when u equals 30 degrees. x sub two, would be equal to 30 degrees plus the next coterminal angle in the positive direction would be plus 360 degrees. But then to find x, we would divide by three. This is 390 degrees divided by three, which equals 130 degrees. Notice how this angle is still in the given interval. And let's try that again. The next positive coterminal angle to 30 degrees would be 30 degrees plus two rotations or 720 degrees divided by three. This is 750 degrees divided by three, which equals 250 degrees. Now we could keep going here, but notice how X is increasing by 120 degrees. 250 plus 120 is beyond 360. So we do get three solutions for X when we have U equals three degrees. And now let's try U equals 330 degrees. So first we'd have X sub four equals 330 degrees divided by three, which equals 110 degrees. Now let's find the next coterminal angle to 330 degrees, which would still have a cosine function value of square root three divided by two. X sub five would be equal to 330 degrees plus 360 degrees divided by three. This would be 690 degrees divided by three or 230 degrees. Notice how this angle increased by 120 degrees from 110 degrees. So let's try another solution. X sub six would equal 330 degrees plus two rotations counterclockwise would be plus 720 degrees divided by three. This is 1050 divided by three, which equals 350 degrees. Notice how this angle again is still in the given interval for X. So this equation actually has one, 
two, three, four, five, six solutions for x on the given interval. And again, to check this graphically, we would graph y equals the left side of the equation and y equals the right side of the equation and see if we have six points of intersection on the given interval. So the left side of the equation is graphed in blue. The right side, y equals zero, is graphed in red. And notice how on the interval from zero degrees to 360 degrees, we do have one, two, three, four, five, six points of intersection, which verifies we did find the correct number of solutions. Okay, we'll take a look at two more examples in part two. I hope you found this helpful.